Hi, welcome to another video. So, RuCode has some pretty good new upgrades, and I wanted to talk about them. But before we do that, let me tell you about today's sponsor, Photogenius AI. Photogenius AI is an all-in-one AI-powered art generator that allows you to type anything and get stunning visuals instantly. Photogenius AI gives you all kinds of image generation models in one place, whether it be Flux, Stable Diffusion, Kardinsky, or any image generator model that you can think of. They have also recently added their new 3D generation suite, which allows you to give it a prompt or an image, and it can generate a 3D model for you that you can use anywhere. Not just that, it also gives you the option to do advanced AI image editing as well, with their cool AI tools like an AI avatar generator, background removal, logo generator, emoji generator, or even add an app icon generator. And the best part is that it starts at only $10, and you can get an additional 25% off these already great deals by using my coupon code KING25. So, make sure that you check out photogenius.ai through the link in the description and generate some cool stuff with it. Now let's come back to the video. First of all, after the last video I did, there have been some pretty good new updates to it. One of the things is that Gemini Flash Thinking is now supported in it, and there are also some pretty minor bug fixes as well. These all come under the minor fixes. The major release after my video is actually quite cool, because it added native VS Code code actions, support with quick fixes, and refactoring options. This basically means that now you'll see some options provided by RuCode when you select a block of code and then right-click it. For instance, you'll have the Explain Code option, the Refactor option, and some more stuff like that. There's also a new option where modes can now request to switch to other modes when needed. This means that if you use architect mode to plan changes, then after planning it, can directly ask you to change to another mode, and once you approve it, the mode will change, which is quite good. The ask and architect modes can now edit markdown files as well. This means that you can now ask architect to plan the changes and put them in a markdown file. I like this change because it ensures that you have a checklist of stuff to do, you can also edit it a bit, and it is easier for AI to follow along because sometimes the context window overflows and then it starts hallucinating. So, this is good for AI to reference as well. If you create custom modes, then they can now be restricted to specific file patterns. For example, a technical writer who can only edit markdown files. This is also good for sure. After this, they also added a drop-down to select the API configuration for a mode in the Prompts tab. It also fixed a bug where Always Allow wasn't showing up for MCP tools. They have also improved Open Router DeepSeek R1 integration by setting the temperature to the recommended level and displaying the reasoning output. You can also now add per-server MCP network timeout configuration, ranging from 15 seconds to an hour. There's also a speed up in diff editing, and there's a new option to perform explain, improve, or fix code actions, either in the existing task or in a new task. It also now makes information about the conversation's context window usage visible in the task header for humans and in the environment for models. There are also newly added checkboxes to auto-approve mode switch requests. Apart from this, they have also added new experimental editing tools called Insert Content for inserting blocks of text at a specific line number and Search and Replace for replacing all instances of a phrase or rejects to complement diff editing and whole file editing. There's also improved DeepSeek R1 support by capturing reasoning from the DeepSeek API as well as more open router variants, 
not using system messages, and fixing a crash on empty chunks. They have also added a new task tool that allows Roo to start new tasks with an initial message and mode. It also has added support for perplexity and sonar reasoning as well. There are also visual fixes to dropdowns and support for O3 Mini, as well as code action improvements to allow selecting code and adding it to context, plus bug fixes. It also has the ability to include a message when approving or rejecting tool use. There are also shortcuts to the currently open tabs in the Add File section of Mentions, along with the ability to switch modes with slash commands, similar to Ader. After this, they have also added new experimental versions of checkpoints similar to the original Klein, which means that it now allows you to roll back and perform everything like that, which is good to see. These are the major new updates. Now, let me show you all this stuff in action. First of all, just open up VS Code and make sure that you upgrade Roo Code by going to the extensions and then upgrading it through there. Once that's done, we now have the new version. So just open it up. Now here, the first thing that you can see is that if you select a chunk of code and click the right mouse button, it will show you some stuff that is related to Roo code. So, Roo code now allows you to basically refactor simple chunks of code, explain code, improve code, and also add to your chat context. It's similar to how Continue does stuff, but it's inbuilt into Roo code itself, which means that it makes it quite simple and easy to do. And it actually makes it a proper cursor alternative if you think about it. The only thing that remains is autocomplete. Anyway, if I click on this fix one, then you can see that it asks what you want it to do. Once you send it in, it will take that into context and just send a message in the chat, and then it will perform the edits accordingly. So this is also good. Now, one more thing is that it can now change the mode midway as well. Just for example, I'm currently in ask mode, and if I ask it in a chat prompt to change its mode to edit, then it will give you an approval prompt in a bit, and then you can approve it, and it will change. Generally, you'll get this when you are working with the architect to make a plan, and when it thinks that the plan is complete, it will prompt you to approve it, and then it will change the mode to edit and stuff like that. One more thing is that Architect and Ask can now create markdown files. So, let's just ask the architect to make a basic plan about something like a calculator app. Once we do that, you'll see that it starts working on it. And if we wait a bit, then it's done. And you can see that it writes the plan to the file as required. So, this is quite great for making a proper plan written in a file that both the AI and you can reference later. You can also now set a model configuration for each mode. So, if you want Architect to use DeepSeek, then you can do that and stuff like that. Also, O3 Mini is now supported. So, you can use that, and you can also use the O3 Mini via GitHub Copilot as well. Some more stuff in the settings is the option to retry failed requests along with three new tools, which are Enable Experimental Checkpoints, Use Experimental Search, and Replace Tool, as well as Experimental Insert Content Tool. If you select Experimental Checkpoints, then it will start the checkpoints similar to Klein. So, if we go back and ask it to make some changes, then it will do that. And if we wait a bit, then you can see that it's now done, and we can just click the revert option here, and it can revert back to any step and stuff like that, which is similar to the original Klein. Roo code is actually quite good now. I love it because it's insanely customizable, and it's updated almost regularly with new features. So, I think that this is especially better for people 
who want some very advanced options that give you the ability to customize it in every way. This is quite great in that sense, and I've been using it a lot these days. Overall, it's pretty cool. Before ending the video, please go ahead and subscribe to my other channel as well, which is called AI Seeking, and watch the videos there as well. Anyway, share your thoughts below and subscribe to the channel. You can also donate via Super Thanks option or join the channel as well and get some perks. I'll see you in the next video. Bye!